We bless the God of our salvation today as we come to hear his word and to have him to speak to our hearts in a wonderful, wonderful way. And I pray that the great teacher, the Holy Spirit, will dwell among us to give us light, revelation, understanding, illumination in his word. We cannot understand without his help. He is the great teacher. And I so desperately depend upon him to help me in all that he has called me to do. I pray, as you know, empower me, O Lord, to become everything that I shall have wished I had become when I stand before thee. And that is my prayer this day, that God would give me words to be able to speak and make my tongue the pen of a ready writer, that he would write upon the tables of your heart from his word, his message of truth, for us to hear in this hour. If you would turn in your Bibles, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Beginning with verse 3. Matthew chapter 24, beginning with verse 3. There you'll find these words. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famine, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Another version says that all of these are the signs of birth. There's always a birth pains before there's an actual birth and the whole earth is travailing in birth so I want to talk about today the signs of the time the signs of the time you will notice here that Jesus speaking saying that you will hear of wars and rumors of wars but notice what he said here that when you hear of all of this stuff going on he says see that you are not troubled see that you are not troubled see that you are not troubled don't be worried don't lose sleep over it see that you are not troubled when you see these things happening in the earth see that you are not troubled for these things must come to pass but notice what he says but the end is not yet touch your neighbor says not over <laughs> and then he went on to say for nation shall rise against nation nation shall rise against nation now when I when I read that I get an impression that sometimes as I study the Word of God or when I am preparing to be able to speak His Word to you that there are different things that come up in my spirit and for some reason when I read the word uh, nation shall rise against nation an impression came on me to look that up in the original Greek and when I did so it talked about lineage and uh, origin and birth and one of the definitions was the word nation and so then I thought about the words of Jesus as Jesus said that nation shall rise up against nation it's actually let's substitute the word now generation shall rise up against generation it's interesting that sometimes what the war that we're looking for is a war of some other nation coming against us and maybe the war that he's talking about is a generation it might be for in your own house it might be right down the hall from you yeah generations at warring uh, at war with each other because of a difference just think about why different nations war with each other because they come from a different place because they speak a different language you know young folks speak a different language than their parents and the, the difference in language they like a different kind of music you know they dress differently their culture is different their customs are different and because there's a difference it becomes generation against generation and then without the use of a concordance I mean uh, Genesis chapter 25 just came to my mind so clearly so clearly uh, after I read that and this is what I discovered in Genesis chapter 25 
and in verse uh, 22 this is you know Isaac and Rebecca they were actually barren Aaron uh, Isaac and Rebecca were barren and Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord granted his plea and Rebecca his wife conceived and here's what it says in Genesis chapter 25 in verse 22 but the children struggled together within her and she said if all is well why am I like this you ever had something toying on the inside of you and you're asking God God why am I like this and uh, if all is well why am I like this so she went to inquire of the Lord she went to God to get a sonogram in a day before there was son uh, you know the uh, 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 sonography before that was developed she went there to get what I call ultrasound from an ultimate God and it is amazing that sometimes if you've got a conflict a struggle that is going on on the inside of you what you need is a sonogram or an ultrasound to hear a, a sound that comes from God and that this is the kind of sound that actually strikes not merely your outer ear but the one that strikes the middle ear say middle ear in your middle ear are some elements and here's the elements of your middle ear is your tympanic membrane known as your uh, eardrum and then there are the three tiniest bones in the body located in your middle ear called the hammer the anvil and the stirrup and all three of those bones are interconnected and whenever sound is spoken or uh, heard by that middle ear it will start vibrating the hammer the anvil and the stirrup start vibrating and they send vibrations to the eardrum and it's connected to the auditory nerve and it takes it down to the brain and the brain translates those vibrations into sound and it creates an image memory and impressions on the mind and so literally when you begin to hear sound you are having images hammered on your mind it is the Word of God that is a hammer. Isn't it amazing how we name those three bones, the tiniest bones in the body, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup? Because they're things that as we hear sound, it is being driven into us. Uh, this, uh, these bones begin to receive vibration so that when God speaks, He's not merely speaking to you, He is speaking to bones. He's speaking to the, to the genetics, the DNA of who you are. He's speaking to your ancestors. He's speaking to bones, literally. And the bones begin to vibrate and send a message, as it were, a Morse code. And then the Morse code goes, and it, as it taps and vibrates, it is sending impulses down the auditory nerve into the brain, where the brain is interpreting these things. And so this woman had a war, a struggle that was going on on the inside of her and didn't know what in the world was wrong with her. And all of a sudden now, she inquires of the Lord, and here is what the Lord has to say to her. He says, uh, unto her, two nations are in your womb, two generations. Two nations are in your room. Two people shall be separated from your body, and one people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. And so when her days were fulfilled to her uh, to give birth, indeed there were twins in her womb. But two nations were at war. Isn't it ironic that Jesus would later on say, nation shall rise against nation? It's really generation against generation. It's brother against brother. This is not a new war. This is one that started a long time ago. It is the same conflict of nation against nation when Cain rose up and slew his brother Abel. It's the same war that's still warring on now. And where we need to be able to hear something from God so that we get a sonographic uh, image of what's going on on the inside. Sometimes you need to get God's word where God will hear, uh, give you a sound and it'll bounce off and it'll create an image. And there are some things that need to be hammered into our hearing. And not just the, the other kinds of stuff that we listen to that are hammered into us, talking about you ain't nothing, you, you know, your mama wasn't nothing, your daddy wasn't nothing, and hammering the wrong kinds of messages and images onto our minds. God maybe intended that those bones be designed to be able to hammer godly images into your mind so that his word would forge into your mind the very things that he sees for us. See, God knows what's going on. He's got a, he's already done the ultrasound on us. 
to know what's struggling in us even when we don't even understand what's going on in us. So maybe, just maybe, as we look back at the words of Jesus, that nation shall rise against uh, nation, it is generation will rise against generation, and there's a war raging. But it is not like the war that we anticipated. Because this time, it is a battle over the seed. This one is a battle over the seed. This one is a battle over heritage. This one is a battle over legacy. This one is a battle over your destiny. It's, it's the one that started with Cain and Abel. It's, a, it's a, a, a battle that is over a generation's soul, and it is not a battle over uh, a geography's soil. Uh, nations fight over soil, but demons fight over souls. This is about a generation's soul. There's a war going on, nation against nation. I, I want you to understand that, that the demonic spirit that got in Cain was to get Abel's soul. He, he wanted to take him. He didn't want any soil. He wanted a soul. He took a life. He's trying to go and going after life. He's trying to, to, to move and do things in life that we're dealing with nation after nation now. This nation rising up with nation, generation after generation. I, I pray that somebody will hear the Holy Ghost today. I, I didn't come to preach a, a political message because I'm not running for office. I've, all, I've been appointed to my seat. I was called. And, and, and so I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't have to, uh, you know, buy the seat. I was divinely elected and appointed to this call. And, and, and I want you to see that we, we are every war, every war that you encounter, every war always has weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass destruction. This is not a presupposed war. This is not one where you'll, you'll go on a, on, on a search for it and then you'll find no, no weapons. In, in this war that is going on right now, the one where nation shall rise up against nation, generation against generation, you will discover that there are weapons of mass destruction. And I want to illuminate for you some of the weapons here of mass destructions that we are dealing with in this generation. The weapons of mass destruction that have been unleashed. Uh, the first one is death by choice. We call it abortion. Death by choice. It is a form of idolatry where we worship the God of pleasure. And then the fruit that comes from it is sacrifice on the altar. They did it back in the Old Testament where they offered their own blood children to idol gods. When I first read about that many, many years ago, I said to me myself, how in the world could anybody in their right mind offer their children up to a, to a god? How could they do that? And yet we do it today and that's what abortion is. People, some folks use abortion like it's birth control. It is worshiping a, 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 a God of hedonism and pleasure that says, if it feels good, do it. And it's our way of saying that I want the pleasure, but I don't want any of the responsibility. And individuals, I, I, I salute and applaud young women that may get pregnant out of wedlock and that will have their baby and deal with the consequences and say, I'm not going to rob a life of something that God gave life. The life is in the blood. And, uh, and I'm going to raise up a godly seed. You'd be surprised what can happen when you allow yourself to be availed to God and say, God, help me, help me. But now we've got death by choice where we are, are issuing things of, of abortion. And I want you to know that abortion does not please God. And you don't know the millions, millions, multiplied tens of millions of innocent children's lives that have been sacrificed through abortion because individuals can't control themselves. Oh, we've got birth control. Folks just don't use it. And then they're aborting their babies because it's inconvenient to them in their political career. What's happening in corporate America, and that's inconvenient to them. And so this is a weapon of mass destruction is to wipe out generations, just wipe them out by abortion. So it's death by choice, death by choice. That's the first one, because we are so dominated by the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye. If it feels good, I want it. If it looks good, I want it. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye, they get us into trouble, but it is the pride of life that keeps us there. That's why God said that if my people who are called by not my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. 
And I just want you to understand today that weapons of mass destruction have already been released in the land, in the land not only in this nation, but in several nations around the world where they are offering up their children to idol gods, to the God of pleasure that they are serving. And they're putting on the altar the souls of little children, and God hates it. He hated it in Scripture, and he hates it now. When they're being sacrificed to something other than the living God, we ought to be raising up a godly seed unto our God. The children belong unto him. Whatever parts of wood, it belongs to the Lord. The Bible says that uh, the, the children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. It belongs to him. It's his reward. Death by choice. It is a weapon of mass destruction. May I give you another alliteration here of what is another weapon of mass destruction? It is divorce. How many lives have been wounded? It is a form of death. It breaks people down. You lose weight trying to deal with the emotional trauma of divorce. Some people gain weight trying to eat to fill up voids that happen in their life, and it destroys so many lives. And that's not even to talk about the fallout of the after effects that happen in the lives of the children who are the real victims of divorce. And I want you to know that God still hates divorce. Malachi chapter 2, he hadn't changed his mind concerning it because it's a covenant. And I understand that some people become victims of it because somebody else didn't do the right thing. Because somebody else just went out and did something that broke covenant. And they created victims in the process. Divorce is a weapon of mass destruction. It has redefined our families. It has caused individuals that were designed to walk with two legs to hobble on one. And yeah, you can get around on one, but you can't get around quite as well as you can when you've got two. Oh, you can move and you can work it, but I just want you to understand that we're seeing the casualties of the war. And I've been down to the VA hospital and seen them there with one leg because they've been in a war and something blew up in their face. And they've got one leg and have got to now survive the rest of their life dealing with crutches and hopping around trying to make it because divorce is a weapon of mass destruction. I didn't come to be popular today. I came to de deliver a word from God. But we are dealing with death by choice and we're dealing with divorce. The third thing that we're dealing with is debt. If he hadn't gotten us by the abortion issue and if he hadn't gotten us by divorce, he's got us tangled up, tied up, twisted up in debt. And there's some time that God is shifting some things. God is correcting, and correction is a work of the Holy Ghost divinely throughout the earth. And when, when man wouldn't listen any kind of way, then God touched the nerve that ran to the pocketbook, and not only the pocketbook of America, but the pocketbook of England, the pocketbook of France, and the pocketbook of Italy, and the pocketbook of Germany. He's running, touching pocketbooks now, touching China's pocketbook. And you get your pocketbook touched, and you'll get God's attention. Uh, I mean, God will get your attention. And uh, nations that would not even collaborate and work with each other. There are some folks that wouldn't collaborate with the war in the Middle East, but uh, like France. But France came and met with the president when the money got funny. You mess with money. And now through debt because of inordinate living and in, in where we, our affections are out of culture and the world has sold us a false bill of goods uh, to, to get us to have what I call false prosperity. Just because you can get it on credit, and he's wrapped us up in so much debt that he's pulled the wool over our eyes. Listen, you better start reading your disclosure statements. If you can't read it and understand it, you better get somebody that loves you that's got sense enough to know how to read it and can interpret it to you because they have to spell out all of the terms to you. And you know some of you all got some stuff that you knew you couldn't afford. And you praise God about it, but you couldn't afford it, but it's not a blessing unless you can afford it. And there are something that the world sold us, a false bill of goods, that you deserve this and you deserve that. You don't deserve anything you can't afford. You ought to tell yourself, yeah, I do deserve it, but I can't afford it right now. I, yeah, I deserve to have that too, but I can't afford it right now. Don't try to get everything you deserve right now. Wait till you can afford it. Because when you get in debt, you become a slave. And that's not a place where God really desires for his people to be. Uh, he said that we should be lenders and not borrowers because when you borrow and you're in debt, you are wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up 25, 30 years at a time. You know what mortgage means literally? It means death doomed. Mortgage, morg, morg. And some of us have gotten stuff and it's almost put us in the morgue trying to pay for it. 
because it almost takes you till you die to pay for this stuff. And so it's a weapon of mass destruction, weapon of mass destruction. Some folks too old even deal with the abortion issue. So he unleashes divorce, and then he unleashes debt. And remember, this is generation against generation. Here's the next one, is dumbing down our moral intelligence. Dumbing down our moral intelligence. You'd be surprised. It aggravates the dickens out of me when I see kids in the natural dumbing down their intelligence in school, and all of a sudden you get around the third or fourth grade, and now it becomes unpopular for boys to be smart. Calling you a nerd, calling you this, calling you that. When, when has anybody gotten paid good for being dumb? Being dumb is, you don't get paid for being dumb. Yeah, you're dumb. What's up? You don't get paid for dumbness. Dumbing down our moral intelligence. My God, you better scale yourself before you kill yourself. We've sold a false bill of goods. You better tell them, give them all the education they can. Let them can all that they get. You ought to be having, having them where they are trained, where they are prepared. The Lord called for skilled people. Your children need to be skilled. They need to be educated. They need to be applying themselves, not just getting through. They need to be getting in. It needs to be getting in them and developing something in them. And it, we need to bring back the popularity where uh, girls ought to say, I'm not going to even date this boy unless he's got some decent marks on his report card. I, who wants dumb children? You better work on improving your gene pool. And I didn't come today to try to bring you any serendipitous pontifications of my oratorical finesse. I came today to talk truth to you plainly so you can understand and know what God wants to know, wants you to know. But don't let anybody dumb you down, make you feel bad because you know something. Maybe God wants to raise up some folks to be teachers, and you don't take knowledge and flaunt it and put anybody else down with it. You use it to lift your brother up. You use it to educate him, and you ought to say, yeah, I'm making a difference. I'm equipping myself. I'm skilling myself so that I can make a difference. I don't learn things so I can be an egghead. I want to educate people everywhere I go. I'm called to lift and educate. It is a weapon of mass destruction to be dumb and unskilled, and that leaves us to have to hustle to survive and do dishonest things and things in the long run that work against us and the family and the moral fiber of America and the moral integrity of our world in which we live. Weapons of mass destruction, mass destructions, death, by choice, divorce, debt, dumbing down your moral intelligence. My wife pointed out another one is diet. We are killing ourselves with the stuff that we put in our systems. There's something that you can eat while you're young and get away with it, but listen, if you don't change your diet, you're going to kill yourself, your blood pressure, your sugar levels. Listen, I prayed you here. Listen, if you don't get these weapons of mass destruction, I'm just trying to help you because I love you. It's a part of my call. I'm called of God because I'm seeing destruction coming to us. And if you're not waiting on the, on the government to give you the best health insurance and you won't take care to eat yourself, Hippocrates said, let food be your medicine. Let food be your medicine. Let food be your medicine. The right kind of food. Let it be your medicine. Let it be your medicine. Weapons of mass destruction. And every time you have a war with something, weapons of mass destruction, there are always after effects of the destruction. I told you, I've been to the VA hospital. I've seen the after effects of a war. I've seen what it does to them mentally. I've seen what it does to them physically. I've seen what it does to them spiritually. Don't think that we can be in a war where Jesus said nation shall rise against nation and we've got them where young folks are talking back 
and this is not a new war because Micah chapter 7 and verse 6 he said the son dishonors the father and the daughter dishonors the mother and uh, the mother-in-law is at variance against the daughter-in-law and the, the father-in-law is against the son-in-law and he says a man's enemies shall be they of his own household a man's enemies shall be they of his own household isn't it something when your real enemy is the enemy that's related to you. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Join us again next time for Power for Living, where revelation is power, power for living.